Hello there, Virgos. Welcome to your tarot reading. So, without further ado, um, I feel that um, the energy for this reading is really about, you know, changes coming in at the very last minute. Okay, so um, I, I do send some really major changes coming into the picture for you. And I feel like the, the, the message I'm getting is um, sooner than expected. But then at the same time, it's like very last minute, very unexpected. So th that's what I'm getting. And it's kind of a contradiction. So let me just explain. Um, I'm feeling almost like there's something that you have been thinking about trying to manifest for a very long time. And I feel like for many of you, it might be two years, you know, the past two years, you're just like, I'm waiting around for it. And um, you're not one to, you know, sit around idle and wait for the tides of change to come uh, swooping in. You guys are very, you know, um, productive. And you guys are quite like busybody. You, you like to stay productive. You like to uh, be efficient with your time. So it's not like you're sitting there mulling around waiting for things to come in. So on the one hand, it's always, you know, on the forefront of your mind that you, you want to implement something. You want to change something. You want to do a drastic move or something very, very, um, I want to say like, it's like a change that is quite drastic for a Virgo. It's a quite a drastic change, okay? Because you guys are still creature of habits. But I feel like you've been mulling over a situation for a very long time. And so it's always on the back of your mind. It's also, on some days, it's on the forefront of your mind. And so I feel like you've been waiting for the opportunity or the chance encounter or something to manifest itself. And so I feel like even though you've been waiting for it for a long time, the way that it comes in, it's like when you've given up hope or when you just like kind of clear it or maybe even move it from the forefront of your mind into the back of your mind and focus on other things and, you know, finding enjoyment and still moving on with your life. That's when this, this major drastic change is going to come in. And so it's coming in at a very, um, I want to say opportune moment, but also very unexpectedly. Okay, so that, that's what I'm seeing. Um, I saw two images for you, and um, I feel like the first image is definitely in relations to your love life. The second image is um, other things that are, you know, that it, it might have to do with this change. So let me just relay the first information first, and then we'll talk about the four cards because it seems like the reading is split this way um so first of all um i see this man he's wearing a coat it's like autumn he's at a park it looks like central park it looks outdoorsy lots of people around but not so much that it's crowded there are a few pigeons on the ground and he's wearing a, like a brown coat he looks very handsome like he's you know probably 35 40 at the latest and um, he has like little, um, like a little Ziploc bag of like breadcrumbs. And so he's kind of casting it onto the ground and the pigeons are like pecking at it. And so he's doing this, he's in a very calm state, but he's thinking about somebody, okay? Um, he, he, it looks to me like, you know, he's on his lunch break, taking a walk, feeding the pigeons, or maybe he finished a sandwich and he, there, there are breadcrumbs in that bag. So he's feeding the pigeons. Um, but either way, he looks like he's in an office type of a work environment because he's he's dressed like, you know, loafers and slacks and uh, a shirt without a tie and a, a, a brown coat, like a brown trench coat. Um, and so he's thinking about something, somebody else. He's thinking about somebody. And so the scene kind of splits in half and there's a, another image. While he's feeding, there's another image of a woman. She's really pretty. She has blonde hair and uh, she has a, a mole, a very distinct mole on the um, bottom, I, I want to say right. Yeah, it would be the bottom right side of her uh, chin, you know, like it's a small speckled mole, but it, it's very distinct for some reason. She has like red pinkish lipstick on. She's in the kitchen. She's wearing an apron. She has blonde hair. She's very young, like probably around the same age um she's cooking a pot of soup so a really big pot of soup 
and she's tasting it from a ladle and she's adding a little bit more seasoning, salt, pepper, whatever it is. And um, then she turns off the stove like it's ready, so she turns it off. And she's looking at the stove, then she looks at her living room and she's alone, you know, in this house, in her space. And she's kind of thinking like, you know, this is such a big pot of soup. I hope, I, or I wish that that other person were here to um, enjoy this food with me. So it seems like there is a situation where the two of you might have been broken up. I, I do see, you know, the split scene as in two people that miss each other, that long for each other's company, that's heavily thinking about one another. That's like, um, the, the, the whole concept about sharing food, cooking for one another, you know, uh, um, uh, I guess connecting through food. It seems very nurturing. It seems like it might have been a relationship where there's a lot of um, community, there's a lot of caring, there's a lot of tenderness, there's a lot of like, you know, mutual affection and um, you know, it's not like you you wouldn't eat and, and, and cook for somebody you don't, you don't like, right? So I feel like in a way, the relationship that you, the two people have had in the past might have been, you know, they might have shared space together, they might have lived together, they might have been married, they might have um, uh, dated for a very long period of time where they're comfortable around each other and they care for each other. So whatever the situation is, there might have been a situation where two people have broken up and they're still longing to reconnect okay so I feel like for majority of you that might be the, the the situation because he's on the park bench eating lunch possibly by himself and then feeding the birds like he wants somebody to share that experience with him and then she's cooking this big pot of soup and she's alone in the, the house and she's thinking like I wish that person were here to share this soup with me so it makes me feel a little bit sad, but at the same time, I just feel like both people are very content. You know, they're going through the motions, they're still able to take care of themselves. So even if it was like a, a breakup or a situation where one person is no longer in the other person's life, life goes on. Like two people are still resuming their life. They miss each other once in a while. They're nostalgic for the past and they, they miss that sense of companionship, I feel. There's definitely a sense of like, yeah, companionship. Um, but you know, life goes on. No one is heartbroken and devastated and unable to function. Both parties are still able to function. Give me just one second, I apologize. Sorry about that. I was making tea and the water boiled, so I had to turn it off. Um, going back to that image that I saw, um, I feel for, for many of you, the fact that these two people are, you know, in different places, like they might, there might be like geographical distance. Um, and the fact that they're heavily thinking about each other um, denotes to me like a really strong soul connection, okay? And um, it's depicted here. I have the two of cups. This is the sense of companionship, okay? Um, the, the cups energy deals with like emotions and also spiritual energy where two people feel very, very connected, okay? Um, when they think about you, you know they're thinking about you, and it, it sort of like, you know, feeds into this uh, loop where you're, you end up reverting to, you know, thinking about them and vice versa. So it's a situation where two people are very, very deeply connected, really care about each other. There might be great compatibility as well really great compatibility between two people. Um, so for you, especially if you're in a long distance relationship, I feel like there is an immense sense of longing, um, wanting to be together, wanting to connect, wanting to, you know, share the experience with another person. And then I also feel for others, um, there might have been a situation where it's like uh, distance, like admiring somebody from a distance is what I'm seeing. I have here the Hermit, and the Hermit is a lonesome card. It doesn't mean loneliness. It seems to me like some type of remote viewing, some type of like distance um, associated with you and another person. And 
this combination, the Hermit and the Nine of Pentacles, admiring somebody from afar, admiring somebody's beauty, admiring the way that they look, and yet being so shy or so uh, hesitant about letting them know how you, how you feel about them, okay? So if you're geographically distant from the person that is, you know, really occupying a lot of your, your, your thoughts and, and you're, you're thinking heavily about them, I feel like they are definitely also thinking about you. And then I also feel, you know, with Virgos are deeply shy by nature. And so I, I do sense that some of you might have somebody that you're really admiring from afar. You know, you're like um, wanting to touch them, wanting to talk to them, wanting to communicate, wanting to really tell, tell them how you feel. But in a way, your feelings for this person scares you. You like to be in control of your emotions. You're also very rational. And I've mentioned this before, but Virgo and people don't fall in love. Like love at first sight is not a thing for you guys. You can date somebody for a very long time, but if you haven't, you know, made up in your mind that you're in love with this person, you might not never fall in love with the person. So I feel like, you know, you're very sensible and just like even keel and level headed when it comes to relationships, when it comes to love, when it comes to emotional expression. And so I feel like you're you're feeling this wave of emotions overcoming you and you kind of, you know, shrug it off or cast it aside. You're like, that's not rational. I barely know this person. It's, it's not rational, you know, to like be head over heels and, 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 and fall in love with someone when I barely know them. So I feel like you, you have someone that you're really admiring you really like this person. They're very independent. Um, I'm, I'm getting a feeling of like somebody who might be, um, let me see, like um, somebody who's quite exotic, who, who you know, um, there, there's something unique about them. So the woman with the mole on her face it's coming out, it's near her chin. So like, I feel like you're dealing with someone who's not stereotypically like, it's not somebody that everyone would consider like classically beautiful or classically handsome. But for whatever reason, there's something about them. They have um, charisma, they have stage presence, they have uh, magnetism. There's something that, that makes them very unique and other people cannot help but stare at them twice. You know how there are some people, they're not classically handsome or beautiful uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but there's something about them that's very alluring. And I feel like it has a lot to do with their confidence, the way they carry themselves, um, the way in the way they carry themselves. Okay, this is a Nine of Pentacles, very independent, um, self-sufficient, bold. It's somebody who is like, um, on the one hand, they can be very earthy, very easygoing, not high maintenance. You won't catch them, you know, uh, dressed to their tea and like um, with full makeup on or, you know, cologne and hairspray and, and grease in their hair or whatever. Like they're not made up. They're just understatedly, like just uh, confident and, and put together without trying so hard. It's somebody that does everything with such grace and such ease. And I feel like because of that, a lot of people are very drawn to them. And then I also, going back to what I mentioned before, a lot of Virgo people, you guys are really deeply very shy. You do get stage fright. You don't like to be on center stage. You don't like to have a lot of attention on you. You, you feel a little bit out of place. And for some of you, some of you, okay, please don't get offended. You might feel a, a little bit, you know, socially awkward in probably a social setting or in a setting where you don't know a lot, uh, a lot of people. Um, you might feel very socially awkward when you have to give a speech, give a talk, when uh, you're speaking and everyone is staring at you. Like, you, you don't like that attention. And so you admire this person for the, the, the bold and the, I guess, like the confident way in which they move through life, the ease in which they do everything and the ease in which things just magically work out for this person. So I feel like 
you really deeply admire this person. Um, and you might be admiring them from afar. And I feel like for some of you, they are also feeling that way about you. But I feel that the gravity of your feelings for them, it's overwhelming you. You know, like you're, you're kind of dumbfounded about like, I don't believe in first love at first sight. You know, why do I feel so strongly about this person when I barely know them? There's a little bit of intrigue and mystery here. Um, and it's like you're, you might not know a lot about them. They might not know a lot about you. You might see each other casually in passing and you might feel like, wow, that would be a really good person for me to date or for me to have as a girlfriend or a boyfriend. And I, I do sense like they have no idea how you feel. And so, you know, uh, trying to make conversation, um, making small talk. Virgos don't really like that, but like making small talk and uh, trying to get into their inner circle and, and trying to, I'm hearing infiltrate, you know, trying to, to like get one leg in the door, okay? I feel like that might be a, a really good first step because they might not have an idea as to how strongly you feel about them and you're kind of scared of the impact that they are having on you, all right? So let me just, um, that's for like singles. I feel like there's someone who's really capturing your imagination and uh, I, I'm just feeling like you're um, tongue-tied and, and nervous and you get flustered and you might flush and turn red when they're around or when you think about them because I feel like your desire for them and your feelings for them can be a little bit overwhelming. Okay, so that's for singles. Um, I'm feeling as if um, for those who are in a relationship, okay, if you're together with somebody, uh, you and your partner have like some, you're kind of like at a major crossroads, not because of the relationship, but you're you're planning to make make some major, major moves, okay? Make some major moves. And I feel like for some of you, um, we have here the two of pentacles. And the Two of Pentacles is about juggling, juggling jobs, juggling responsibilities, uh, trying to figure out, you know, do I stay here where it's stable or do I go somewhere else? And I feel like this, this, um, this decision, you're trying to think of it. It, it, it's like it doesn't exist in a vacuum. You're not making this decision alone. There's inputs from your partner. There's considerations from your partner that's like coming into the picture. And so like you're you're trying to make all the pieces fit, okay? And that's gonna become a little bit more apparent when I talk about the next image that I see. Make all the picture, uh, like the, the pieces fit together so that you can, you know, implement some type of a plan. So there's a lot of mulling over. There's a lot, a lot of communication. And then I also feel as well, there's a, a sense of like temptation, temptation, okay? You might be in one relationship and uh, you're captivated by another person, okay? I'm seeing a lot of like earth and, and uh, water. So like another earth sign, um, Virgo, um, Taurus, Capricorn, and water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. So you might be in a relationship with one of those signs and then you're like um, fascinated or, or interested in another person. Okay, and so you're trying to, you know, figure out what course of action to take, what you should do. Um, do I stay in this relationship or do I jump into another relationship? So I feel like there, there's a lot of relationship energy really um, just um, occupying a lot of your mind space. Okay, and, and um, you know you're very good at compartmentalizing. You know, when you're at work, you put on your work hat and then everything else that's not work related kind of falls away and then when it, the work day is over you take off that hat and then you go home and that's when you think about all the other areas of your life so you're you're very able to um compartmentalize but i do feel there's a relationships um thoughts of relationship decisions about relationship relationships and things like that might be occupying a, the majority of your time for this month um, so that's what I'm seeing here. The second image that I saw 
is um, I see this jigsaw puzzle. It's a scene of like a, a tsunami, like a, an ocean, you know, waves coming in. Not like a giant tidal wave, but it looks almost like those Japanese, you know, uh, pictures of like tsunamis, like uh, oceans, ocean waves. Okay, it's it's a jigsaw puzzle. It's incomplete. Uh, the edges are already filled in. But the pieces are missing from the inside, and so I see somebody's hands putting the pieces together, and the person finds this piece, and the color scheme is very, very similar to something that's、um, part of the wave over here. the The color scheme is really similar. So you know how when you do jigsaw puzzles,、uh, the strategy is do the edges, and then you know、uh, group all the pieces together that have similar color schemes, and then go from there, right? So that's the way I I feel like a systematic Virgo's mind would work. Like pieces should fit together, and so the hand holds up, and I think it's a guy's hand.、Uh, it's a man's hand, and he finds this piece and he's like, "Oh, it's going here," and then he tries to fit it in,、uh, rotates it, it doesn't fit, and he's all like, "But it has to. The colors are so similar." And so he puts it down, and he's like, "Maybe there's something wrong with the laser that we're used to cut the pieces." So he starts, you know, turns his hand into a fist and starts like pounding on it to make sure it fits. But sure enough, it doesn't fit. And so he puts it aside, and you see it in fast motion, where he finds pieces and everything's filled in, and at the very end, there's one piece missing. And then he goes, "Oh, that piece that I put aside, now it goes here." And then the scene just kind of cuts out. So, what I'm seeing here, like I mentioned before, you know,、um, there's a time and a place for everything, and everything works when it's supposed to, and everything falls into place when it's supposed to. If we, you know, try to change that logic and try to fit something where it doesn't belong. And we try to stomp it and, and pound it in; it's still going to resist. Okay, so I, I definitely feel like there was something that you thought was really right, like in your hearts of hearts, in your mind. No matter how much you mull it over, you're just like it's perfect. It has to work. It has to work. And for some reason, it didn't work. For whatever reason that you couldn't even、uh, understand. I guess that reason was never shown to you, and it, even till now, you know, whatever that situation happened in your life, even now you're still perplexed about it. You're just like, well, it didn't work in the past, you know, and I don't know why it didn't work. What will happen now to make things work? So I feel almost like this, you know,、um, it's like an infinity loop, you know, this this things coming back full circle. Where you're reminded of a time where you try something and you were so 100% sure that, well, the colors are similar, the edges are similar, why didn't it fit? And now a similar situation is coming around, and you're just like, what if it doesn't fit this time? What if it flops on me? Right? Um, and so I, I feel like there's something coming around full circle, okay? And whatever didn't work out before, it's gonna work out now, because in the past you forced it, you pounded it in, and I feel almost like you were so focused heavily on the 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 details, on the.、Um, I I, I want to say like you were you might have been focused on I, I guess like it, it it's sort of like wanting something so badly and and making sure that it fit even when the physical environment was not right. Does that make sense? And I mean it got to the point where the man with the jigsaw puzzle he was like using his fist to kind of like hammer it in, but it didn't fit. And so they're telling you whatever that situation was that that made you feel like you doubted your intuition, you doubted your judgment because you were so sure. Whatever it was, it's coming back around, and now you're in a much better space where you're not trying to make things fit 
where you're not trying to force things, where you are operating from a place of wisdom and allowing. And that's when the situation is like, it's right, okay? So there's a time and a place for everything. We have to be able to see the big picture in order to understand how the parts all fit together. Does that make sense? And the reason I say that is you have some, some two cards here that are back to back. Five of Swords. And then the Six of Swords. Oh, I'm sorry. Five of Wands. Excuse me. And then the Six of Wands. Okay? So. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the Five of Swords. So, the Five of Swords is a situation where we're kind of like arguing, bickering. And the sword energy denotes communication, thought processes, mental processes that might have been faulty, where no one is really getting a word in. Everyone is bickering. Everyone is trying to, you know, be right, trying to prove that they're right. And with the five energies, five indicates some major turning point, some major change, okay? And then we have here the six of wands, which is a victory. There is a situation here in the past, it was punctuated with a lot of conflict, with a lot of faulty reasoning, with a lot of just like, um, you know, I believe this, even though I haven't really done the research, I still believe this. You might have been dealing with people like this in your environment, where the energy that they kick up around them was like a, a repellent for good things to come. Okay, there might have been an environment that you were in where, you know, let's say this, okay, um, a lot, if you're like ever walking or running on a dirt path, right, if you're running or walking on a dirt path with every footstep or with every step, it kicks up a little bit of dust, right? And so just imagine energetically when you're in this type of environment where people are constantly bickering, constantly shuffling around, moving around, trying to prove each other, prove themselves right, trying to one up the other person. Like if it's like laden with a lot of chaos and a lot of activity and a lot of competition, it creates a major dust cloud, like a major sphere or a major environment where there's a lot of, you know, negativity, negative energies. And so it repels, you know, you wouldn't want to walk over where that dirt cloud has been stirred up, right? And so this environment was a repellent for good things to come in the picture. And so whatever it was that you were trying to do, I feel like it, it, it flopped down. It didn't have a lot of support. It just um, couldn't see the light of day. It couldn't rise above the dust cloud, okay? So I'm a little bit inclined to say that the people you might have had around you might not have been good for your growth. The and work environment and the, the colleagues or the, the energies just surrounding the work environment was not conducive for good things to, to, uh, to attract good things or to even, you know, be in alignment with you. And so I see you turning your back to the situation, okay? No more bickering, no more pettiness, no more conflict. I'm turning my back. And as soon as you decide to turn your back, we have a lot of victory, a lot of success coming through. And I'm almost seeing like um, one after another, like a series of successes, one after another, because you decided to turn your back. You decided to kind of retreat from this, from the ground, okay? Climbing up into the tree, elevating yourself, seeing above the dust cloud and being able to operate and function from above that, that cloud of negativity and to be able to, you know, warm yourself in the sun and to be able to attract a lot of success. Okay. So what I'm seeing here is there has been a major change. Whatever didn't work out in the past, I do feel a lot of, you know, success, victory is coming in as a result of you, you know, needing to change this environment in your life, okay? There's some major news associated with it as well. We have here the Page of Swords and um, the Page energies are um, snippets and messages coming through and I do feel like um, resolution, okay? Like a, 
um, being wanting to make a, a decision but not having all the information waiting on communication from another source so that you can decide which option to go with okay so I do feel for many of you there's some major swift communication coming through this month in order to splice through that dust cloud and to be able to let things settle and for you to decide on major changes in your life okay and what I'm seeing as well for many of you this is like uh, leaving troublesome friendships colleagues um, petty people I would say um, argumentative petty people people who are just like um, you know what's funny is um, I don't see gossip and slander and things like that I don't see that in here I just feel with this five of swords it's like people who constantly want to be right who have their their daily agenda is just wanting to prove themselves right wanting to show other people how smart they are and um, things like that okay so I feel like you know you're you're turning your back away from this and you might at a point uh, at this point in your life no longer feeding into this no longer interested like like you're just disinterested in what's over here because you're seeing the bigger picture you're looking at things from a higher vantage point and you're leaving these mortal to you know these mortals to squabbles among them amongst themselves because you're just disinterested you're disengaging you're disengaging and you're distancing yourself and with the hermit, it, it basically spells out to me like a, a sense of enlightenment, okay? Not being bogged down with the material things that at the end of the day don't really matter, but operating from a higher vantage point, okay? And what I'm also getting, the last three cards in this deck, we have the tower, sweeping waves of change, okay? So that jigsaw puzzle where I saw the tsunami, um, the theme is very similar to this card here, okay? Um, what I'm feeling here is, um, this is, I pulled out this card earlier to um, clarify what the tower um, represents. And this card to me is about manifestation, is about, um, it, it's almost like, you know, thinking whether or not we have the capabilities and the skills and the, the know-how and the um, ability to do something. I feel like whatever that situation was in the past that you failed at or you felt like I was so sure why didn't it work out uh, it made you doubt yourself I feel like it humbled you but in a way you know it, it made you feel like you doubted yourself it made you feel like you couldn't manifest it made you um, doubt your capabilities and so what's coming through in the process here is you have a lot of skills and a lot of talents and I feel like this environment here did not give you an opportunity to shine. It did not honor your growth potential. It was not conducive for growth. It was not conducive for you to utilize your full talent, to display all your skills, all your assets, all the, it, it, it just like, it stifle your growth almost okay and so there is a huge sweeping change coming into the picture so this is a mermaid here five of cups okay wondering about something that um like a missed opportunity okay longing for something that's no longer in the picture but um i see this as like a scorched earth okay this is a mermaid and the classical like um, depiction of a mermaid is um, it has a body of a fish and a head of a woman, right? This is the opposite. This is a uh, situation where this animal has to adapt to its environment, you know? It's not happy, it still like has a head of a fish, it wants to be in the sea. And yet the, the, the body had no choice but to adapt, to grow legs so that it could walk on land because there, this environment is very parched. There's no emotional fulfillment. There's no spiritual fulfillment. It's just very parched. And so it's waiting for the rains to come and wash it away and, and to carry it to sea. And that's what I feel is coming here with the tower. Sweeping changes, this big tsunami coming in uh, and, and carrying you back into the sea where you can, you know, resume your form as a mermaid. Okay, like the traditional standard mermaid form 
face of a woman, body of a fish. And she is now in an environment where there's um, water, where there's life, where there's emotional fulfillment. And so there's something major here that will be coming through in the month of December. And I do feel like it's going to bring you to an environment where you belong because wherever you are right here is not meant for you. It's um, there's no growth potential. There's a lot of dryness and I'm seeing like, you know, just like it's an environment that's very dry. So for many of you, you might be changing jobs. You might be moving from a really dry, arid environment like the desert to a place that's uh, in the tropics, that's by the sea, that's uh, a lot more, I, I want to say like, it's just a lot more conducive for growth, okay? And we're not just talking about like, um, like a place that's green and lush and things like that. We're talking about emotional, spiritual growth. We're talking as well, career growth. We're talking as well, you know, the, being in a new environment where you're able to develop to your full potential where people appreciate all that you have to offer and they don't take you for granted pretty much, okay? So that's what I'm seeing here. Um, once again, it's like the change is long coming, but it's gonna swoop in very, very quick. And that's a contradiction, but for whatever reason, I just feel like you've been waiting for it for quite some time, but it's going to come in very unexpectedly. You're kind of uh, bookended by two major arcana cards here. We have the Hermit, taking time to yourself, being deep in contemplation, and really figuring out, you know, what's the next step in your life. And then once you have that figured out, once you've reached that space of wisdom, that's when the Tower will bring about these changes that you've been wanting for a very long time, all right? So I'm going to leave it at that. I do wish you all the best for the month of December. Once again, I apologize for the delay with this reading. I hope it finds you well still, and I hope it is relevant and applicable and uh, might be helpful for you this month, okay? I will be back next month. I will talk to you later, Virgos. Take care of yourself.